Hello class and welcome to this Excite Bike NES walkthrough right here on Video Games 101 by way of Let's Play with Briggins. I'm your instructor, Professor Briggins, and we've got some tips for you today for Excite Bike on how to essentially get through the five races with opponents, of course. Mode B is the only way to live, but by the end of this class, I dare say you'll be better than this CPU display driver when it comes to... Oh yeah, you'll definitely be better than them, but uh, in terms of difficulty, I mean, it's really what you make out of it. If you're trying to get first place in every single race, this game is extremely difficult. I'm going to go ahead and give it, as an overall vibe, a 6 out of 10. This equates to biting down and then throwing your controller across the room, probably because, you know, you overheat it right at the last second or somebody cuts you off and you end up crashing. But uh, Excite Bike's one of those games that's easy to pick up, tough to master. So we're going to help you with that second part. As an aside, I'm going to try to get first in every single race. Very challenging to do in this game. That's when it becomes a, a 9, probably on the difficulty scale. But uh, for a little extra challenge, maybe to bump it up, I'm playing this with the overheating alarm off. So not only is it more challenging, but it's more realistic too, you know? I mean, when you're in your car, there's not like a warning light to tell you something's wrong with your engine, you know? Oh, wait. Alright, first thing to do is select our game mode. A is with no competition, B is with the other bikes. That's the only way to play as far as I'm concerned. And then we can design our own course, which is fun, but not what we'll be talking about today. As we take a look at the controls for Excite Bike now, both A and B go, but B is the turbo. This raises your engine temperature, makes you go a little bit faster. Pause the game with start, and we can move with up and down, and moving left or right in the air controls the angle and nose of our bike. Gotta make sure we land on two wheels. Nice flat on the ground. As we take a look at the Briggs notes now. First, very important, keep an eye on your temperature gauge. You will hear that buzzer sound normally in your game if uh, it's about to overheat. That's your sign to, to let go of the B button and switch over to normal acceleration with A. If you lay on up for too long, this is what happens. It's like a, a four second delay before you can get back. It's worse than crashing most times, so you really need to keep an eye on that. Number two, stay at the top of the track. Not only is this where the cooling strips are that Blaze is going to talk about in a minute, but it's just easier to stay away from the other bikes and have a bit more perspective when you're at the top. Number three, know the tracks backwards and forwards so you know where the strips are, the different obstacles coming up. Uh, number four, lean that nose forward when you're leaving the ground, like on a ramp or a ramp-shaped obstacle. Get a little extra speed that way, just make sure you flatten yourself out for a nice smooth landing. And finally, avoid the other bikes when there's too much traffic. You kind of want to stay away from them. It's usually better just drop your speed a little bit than risk crashing into one of the other bikes. But uh, let's go to Blaze now, as I mentioned, for a, just a quick overview of those strips. Blaze? Very little to talk about in terms of items in Excite Bike, but something I should point out. The zip strip will cool down your bike. Not sure the signs behind driving over something on the ground instantly fixing your about to overheat motor in your Excite bike. But uh, there you go. Be on the lookout for these. Drive over them. It'll refresh your overheat meter and save you from overheating. Right, thank you very much, Blaze. We hit the strip right there to cool things down. Uh, after you win your first race, you have to do it again. The first time is a qualifier, essentially, so that's why we're running this first race twice. And you'll see with these uh, these little pyramids here, when you use a little bit of a uh, turbo boost going into each one, you can just kind of mold your bike if you hit it just right with enough speed, which you can only do with the turbo, to get yourself a nice little boost of speed when you touch down and just kind of mold your bike to each of the, uh, the obstacles there. But... Moving on the track too. I like the color scheme here, the, the blue and the salmonish, orangey kind of background there. As they're introducing a new obstacle for the first time, here I like to hit it with some turbo, 
and uh, pull back just a little bit to make sure that we we clear that for the highest point essentially. If you take uh, a little bit of the gas off there, you can hit both of those ramps. It's really your choice, but again, with these little pyramids, we mold our bike. Got another new obstacle with the extra rough there. You got these little rough patches. You can always tell what the other bikes are going to do when it comes to those sections. That's where you might need to slow it down a little bit sometimes, because they will always go to avoid the, uh, the mud part, so... Just uh, know that they're going to change lanes there and act accordingly. Sometimes take your foot off the gas, whatever you got to do. As we're working on this second lap here, let's go to Fluff and get our first Fluff fact about Excite Bike. Fluff? We touched on this in our class on Super Mario Brothers, but this game was designed and directed by the father of Mario, Shigeru Miyamoto, and the side-scrolling game engine he helped create for Excite Bike was implemented in the Super Mario Brothers to allow Mario to smoothly accelerate from walking to running. Miyamoto had the idea to utilize the tools from this game, as well as Kung Fu, which incidentally is another game we've done a class on recently, and applying them to advance the platforming, athletic game genre, which they first created in 1981's Donkey Kong to make Super Mario Bros. Thank you very much, Fluff. Yeah, this and Kung Fu, very important in uh, putting together those the physics and just overall vibe, I guess for Super Mario. I know we talked about in that class Fluff mentioned Shigeru Miyamoto wanted to uh, create kind of a, a more daytime cheery background instead of just that stock black that pretty much every game went with out of, you know, simplicity and necessity. So introduce that light blue background like you were outside. Give it that theme. But by the way, they really ratchet up the difficulty for this third track. If you're trying to get first place here, it's very difficult to to get under that minute 10 you need a flawless run by the way tip your nose forward here and you can bounce away from some of the mud that'll slow you down so nice way to shave a couple seconds off that's the one exception to the land flat when you're uh, coming off of a ramp i love that little collision everyone was involved in and i think we got this here nice yeah after the fifth race this is the hardest if you ask me while we're celebrating, let's get another fluff fact. Excite Bike has had a few sequels over the years, notably Excite Bike 64 on the Nintendo 64. Incidentally, in that game, the original NES Excite Bike is an unlockable game within that game. Thank you very much, Fluff. I don't think I've ever played Excite Bike 64, so we have a new obstacle here on the fourth track. I like to use the uh, hit the bottom side and just hit it with some turbo boost. And that way you can essentially just use it as a nice ramp. You avoid the, the rough, the mud, so you don't have to get slowed down and it's faster than if you hit the top there. Let's see, we see the way that we're hitting a lot of these ramps and uh, obstacles that are pyramid shaped in different cases. Use the wheel there to get a little bounce. Yeah, the time to beat on the fourth track is a lot easier compared to the third one. I don't know why they set it up that way, but I feel so confident, I think we can throw to Fluff for another Fluff fact about Excite Bike. We've talked about the additional capabilities the Famicom had over the NES. In the enhanced Japanese version of this game, players can save and load their custom tracks as the discs the Famicom ran games on had the capability to save and load. The NES alternatively used cartridges and couldn't save without a battery in the cartridge, which the Western version of Excite Bike didn't feature. Good luck, Fluff. See, we crashed, but uh, I think we're going to be just fine. We're pretty good with time. Always nice when you don't run into a lot of traffic at the mud. There it is. Yeah, they usually make it by design that they bunch up a lot of bikes there. The first place time is always eight seconds better than the third place time for what it's worth. If you're not aware of what it is, you only see the third place on the wall at a particular moment. But here it is. Far and away the most difficult race in this game. The, uh, the contrast on the track, it's like difficult to see the lines. Thankfully, there's only four positions every bike can be in, but yeah, it's just it's just kind of nasty on the eyes, but far and away the most difficult track. I already missed the, uh, the strip. You can have a perfect run of this, meaning no crashes and a pretty decent time and still not win, but we'll see what happens. As we're trying our best here, <laughs> let's throw it to Fluff. I'm gonna stay on the bottom because of the zip strip and get one last Fluff fact about Excite Bike. What do you got, Fluff? I only mention this one because the professor is playing through The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask over on Let's Play with Brigands. But there's a subtle reference to Excite Bike when taking Keaton's quiz. 
Whenever correctly answering one of his questions, the pause sound from Excite Bike will play. Good call, yeah. Enjoying that game quite a bit, my first full playthrough. I'm not sure this is going to happen. <laughs> you can always tell when you're not at the uh, the mud part at the end, that last little straightaway. And, uh, you know, you still have ten or so seconds. If we get in third or better, that's still a win, as long as you're on the podium. Oh my god! <laughs> Eighteen one hundredths of a second. Just made it. That's a victory as far as I'm concerned. You can see how far off we were with the best time. Seven seconds, and that was the ride of my life, essentially. So so that's not going to happen, but as long as we're on that podium through five races, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Hopefully we uh, learned you a thing or two about this game. This classic racing game from Nintendo. And uh, just a reminder, we do one of these classes every single week. We'd love to have you enrolled, so please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Give this video a like, it really does help us out, and leave a comment. What are your memories of Excite Bike? You ever get first on that final race? We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now.